We're shooting for Hemmings, uh, where we were using my Bronco and Donnie's Bronco to kind of do a comparison uh, for their new series, Tested 4x4. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we we're shooting with my Bronco and then brought Donnie's Bronco over to the shop. And I was like, hey, what if we throw a mic in your face and uh, record the podcast? These are fancy mics, too. And I feel all fancy. I feel like an <laughs> official podcaster now. Welcome back to the Broncast, a podcast all about the Ford Bronco. I'm your host, John Melton. And I'm Donnie Whiteman. We are two Bronco enthusiasts who own Broncos. We work on Broncos. We love Broncos. We just love talking about Broncos from Generation 1 all the way through Generation 6. Our sponsor for today's episode is Tom's Off-Road. Tom's Off-Road has every part that you need to restore or build a new Bronco or an old Bronco, whichever one you want. In this episode, we're going to be, uh, we're actually in the shop of our special guest, legendary fabricator, welder, four-wheeling and off-road show host, Ian Johnson. That's me. Legendary. <laughs> legendary. Like you got that. legendary status. Legendary. <laughs> he does. That just means I'm old now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it means. I feel old. Yeah. But that's what you're, it means. You're so seasoned that you're legendary. 20... God, this year is like 20 some odd years doing this wow. TV shenanigan things. 20, what is this? 2023? 20? Yeah, 20-ish years. Too long. Wow. So for those of you who may not know, uh, I get the privilege of working with Ian Johnson on a regular basis. I do video production for my full-time job. Uh, Broncos aren't my full-time job. So I get to work with Ian a lot, um, shooting a bunch of shows for Motor Trend and and uh, all kinds of all kinds of stuff that we get to do. Um, everything, everywhere. Everything, a lot of everywhere. video, a lot yeah. of video, a lot of road trips, a lot yeah. of shenanigans. It's <laughs> yeah. all good. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, we're shooting for Hemmings, uh, where we were using my Bronco and Donnie's Bronco to kind of do a comparison uh, for their new series, Tested 4x4. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we we're shooting with my Bronco and then brought Donnie's Bronco over to the shop. And I was like, Hey, what if we throw a mic in your face and, uh, record the podcast? These are fancy mics too. And I feel all fancy. I feel like an <laughs> official podcaster now. It is. It's like we, we we're the real deal because we have a podcast producer. Watch out Joe Rogan. That's right. <laughs> Here we That's come. Right. That's right. Your days are numbered. All right. So going back, uh, when did you start? doing off-road tv or like your, what was your first show 2003 we launched a show called extreme four by four myself and tom spachowski helped develop that show for rtm productions uh, i was basically teaching high school up in canada rtm productions was looking for a well actually sorry i gotta back it up a little bit prior to that show I was a guest builder on monster garage so i did monster oh. garage first that was 2002 I did my very first job on television, which was Monster Garage, and then, but my very, very first full-time TV show launch was Extreme 4x4 for RTM Productions. And when did the hair happen? So the hair happened over time. I always <laughs> had, I always had like spiky hair, and then the story is that when my son was like, I think he was like six or seven, he was getting taller, and we were joking about how he's getting close to as tall as I was, and I guess he'd be a little bit lower than that, probably 10, and I was like, well, yeah, but you're not ever not going to be taller than me because the hair counts. And it just sort of happened over time that it just kept getting bigger and bigger, and then it just stuck. So, nice. Yeah, nice. Just, that's just how it happened. It is It is you. It's like... Man, it, I tell you what. My brother went bald when he was like 30. <laughs> my dad went bald when he was 30. When I was in high school, I had like a sweet, sweet mullet. So <laughs> I, was, I always said, man, I'm going to enjoy my hair for as long as I have it. And I'm in my 50s now, and I still have it. So... I'm going to play with my hair until the day I have no more hair. There you go. There That's, you go. I think you might as well. You know? yep. Yep. Well, people think welding's dangerous and you're going to get electrocuted, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with it. So Yeah. No, it's, 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 it, it <laughs> and everyone asks how flammable it is and it's not. I've gotten lots of welder, weld berries and sparks in the hair. It's a non-flammable gel, which is good. <laughs> That's good. So, it's welder's gel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Yep. Well, okay, so uh, a couple things that we do on the Broncast. Um, first, we kind of just catch up and we uh, talk through what we've been working on throughout the week uh, this week. And um, so, yeah, uh, Ian, Donnie, what have you guys been working on this week? Uh, I'll let Ian start. I'll go next. So this week we just finished, uh, we're about halfway through filming Four Wheeler for Motor Trend. So last week we finished filming that. And so whenever that happens, I have to spend like a couple days rearranging the shop. So we did that. 
Um, and then I guess this week what I'm doing right now is I'm working on, I built a bomber fab tube car trail chassis last year and finished it, but in typical fashion, it was finished just for TV. And so it wasn't really finished. Yeah. And so it was in raw steel and there was some things I want to change on it. So this week I'm stripping it down and getting ready to get it painted and then I'll reassemble it next week and get it back on the trail. Man. Four wheeler. Yeah. Uh, your show is four wheeler. Four wheeler on motor trend. That's, that's the biggest one right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 So we do 10 episodes a year for them. We shoot, uh, basically three episodes in a week. The crew comes in, we bang out three episodes, then they go away for a couple months and then they come back and we do three more. And Man. yeah, it's, it's a fun gig. I really liked it. I was a little skeptical when I, cause I left quote unquote traditional TV, uh, when I, I, and I was kind of burned out on it. And then when, uh, motor trend discovery Warner and, uh, Brenton productions came in and said, Hey, we want to do four wheeler. I was like, man, I don't know. Cause this, I just got, I literally was just burned out on just the drama and the shenanigans of TV. But, uh, I said, well, we'll try one season and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, we're in season five now. Cause it's just a fun show to make. They're a yeah. great production company to work with. The network is a great network to deal with. They're super easy. There's no stress. Um, yeah, they just let me do what I want to do, which is build cool junk and have fun. So it's That's good cool. times. It's cool. What have you been working on? Mostly rock slide engineering step sliders, the electric steps that they make that completely retract and hide under the truck and, yeah. and they become rock sliders. So unlike some of the other ones that are on the market, but we did the four door new Bronco. We did the early Bronco for Matt for Supercell. And now we're going to do my two door. Oh, nice. New Gen 6. Which is sitting right behind us. Yeah. Which right has now. nothing underneath yeah. it. So yeah. I have to hoist myself into the truck to get into yeah, it nice we got the seat heaters from tom's off-road tom's off-road came out with some new just seat time heaters. for summer yeah <laughs> <I> know, super <laughs> hot degree seat heaters but i went i was like all right like if i'm gonna take my seats apart you know i'm gonna rebuild all of them so i got new foam new everything to recover my front seats put the seat heaters in do all that so working on that project right now but yeah it's uh it's pretty fun Going, going well. All right. So uh, the next thing that we always do that we love is the parts corner. So this is kind of, you know, it's one of those things like mechanics, uh, guys who work on vehicles, they love parts. They love talking tools. They love, you know, just like, oh, man, tr you know, check this thing out. Check this thing out. So we always kind of go through our parts corner part of the week or tool of the week whatever whatever it is in the moment um so yeah you got a you got a tool that you've been loving this week man tool of the week that's a tough one <laughs> um probably the one i've used man if if i had to pick like one tool in the past few weeks that i've used a lot that's super handy is my power probe because i had to do it's got uh -huh. done swapping my 47 v8 into my tacoma so i got that project <laughs> all finished and there was a whole bunch of wiring I had to do with that. And so whenever it's wiring, the power probe is like super, super handy. Yeah. So I did a bunch of wiring recently. So if I had to pick like one tool, I mean, aside from like my fab table and my plasma table and my welders, but that's a little, I can't just say, oh, the tool that everyone needs is a <laughs> $60,000 plasma table. Yeah. But trust me, everyone needs one. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. handy tool to have. But yeah, if I had to pick like a tool that was like, hey, I should go out and buy this. Yeah, I'd say get a power probe. I have one sitting in my uh, console in my mm -hmm. in yeah. my classic Bronco because yeah. I, I have, use frequently. I frequently <laughs> use, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have three. I have one <laughs> one in the trail bag, one in the tow rig, and then one in the shop. So yeah, they're yeah. always. I have them everywhere. I love them. They're great. Yep. You got a part? Yeah, actually, we just had this truck lifted up in the air, and while you guys were shooting, and I was admiring my Next Venture Motorsports aluminum belly skids. The entire bottom of the truck is skid plated. And then it has the, uh, what's the material made of? Ian? It's UHM. It's ultra high, high weight, ultra high, lightweight, molecular. It's basically plastic. It's a really <laughs> yeah. expensive word to say plastic. <laughs> it's like half inch thick, but the truck could slide over anything. Small cars, mailboxes, trees, rocks. Uh, but yeah, it, the entire truck's covered. So I'm going to post a little video where I just walked underneath the truck. Nice. Um, nice. How about you? Man, I am um, doing the the uh, front seats on the Bronco, they have these hog ring pliers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know it's simple, but when you have to do those seats, like having those pliers is, I think they're $12 on Tom's site. Like super cheap, super easy, but like way better than trying to figure out how to do it with just a pair of pliers or, or anything like that. So 
I know it's easy, but the hog ring pliers for uh, for the redoing the upholstery on on the seats there. I wonder where they got their name from. <laughs> hog ring, hog hogs, ring. I guess. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Hog nose, like putting the rings in the nose of the pig. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. All right, so uh, so we're here with Ian. We're in Ian's shop, and uh, now a while ago, you actually took Donnie's Bronco and. It was it wasn't Donnie's Bronco back then, and uh, put all this on. Do you remember all that you did on? Oh yeah, on that. What, what, what was what was that process? So the long story about Donnie's Bronco is it was my Bronco yeah. that I bought by mistake. <laughs> so I got and tried to give to me. I tried to sell to John. <laughs> yeah. So I got I got all excited during the launch of the Bronco, like everyone else, and I pre-ordered a Bronco and forgot about it. <laughs> and it was literally like. I think almost 18 months later that the dealership called me and they said, hey, your Bronco is going to be built. It's going to be delivered at such and such time. And I almost said, nah, I don't want that Bronco. But then I realized, oh, wait a minute, someone will want that Bronco. Yeah, bring it in. I'll, I'll, I'll find someone. So I offered it to John. And then and then John said, nah, I, I, I don't think it was actually John that said no. I think it was, it was Miss, 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 Mrs. Mrs. Melton, Melton said, no, said. thank you. We don't need a two-door <laughs> Bronco in our life, which I understand. And uh, so then he was like, but I think Donnie wants it. And so then Donnie... Donnie got it, and then uh, I said, you can have it, but the deal is I need it for a show. So we did, um, it's got Havoc off-road bumpers front and rear. It's got, uh, at that time, Icon had just come out with all their new suspension for the Broncos. And so I actually went to Icon to take a look at the suspension. Before, it was kind of almost right was it being released. And so it's got the Stage 7 kit on it. The only other upgrade you can do to that suspension is you can get basically the electronic, basically it's called live valve shocks, which you can add to that. Um, but it's uh, billet upper control arms with their, they have a really unique, it's basically almost like a uniball, but it's still a ball joint. So you got much more travel out of the front suspension. The rear shocks are actually installed inverted and actually go up through a hole in the frame. So you get an extra. So it's not just a lift kit. Like you can buy a lift kit, but the Icon kit is actually a true suspension system because with a lift kit, you can't get as much travel as you can get with that Icon kit. And then we did their Icon wheels, which are like a kind of a new design beadlock where bolts go through the outside of the wheel and uh, capture the outer bead. So they're still DOT legal because they haven't modified the outside bead, but they're a true beadlock. And then we did uh, new uh, new transmission, deep sump transmission pan for, with uh, external fins for cooling. We did the um, uh, Next Venture Motorsport skid plates that Donnie was talking about, which was a great product because it basically covered the entire underneath the truck front to back. It's uh, And if you're driving these Broncos off-road, you've got to get that skid plate. There's yep. so much low-hanging fruit down there that you don't want to mess around <laughs> with. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then finished it off with the... With just some, I think it was 30, what are they, 35s or 37s? I can't remember. 37s. And then, 37s, yeah, and then did the Fender Delete, which I think looked really good. Oh, and then a Pedal Commander, which if you have a Bronco, you got to buy a Pedal Commander. Yeah. It's kind of scary how good it. that thing works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ian, Ian gave it to me in like GT40 mode or yeah, something like perfect. that. Yeah, I did great. a burnout inside Max, his shop stage, just backing out. Stage four, I think is what it was. <laughs> like, Why would you put it on anything but? I go, this one goes to 11, and that's where we put it. <laughs> that's it's where great. we put it. Yep. I was just pulling it up. Season four, episode seven of four. Four wheeler yep. is yeah. be last year is that show yeah um super cool it looks i mean it looks amazing and donnie and i get to drive it around have fun it's I mean, a cool truck and i told donnie i said it's a good thing he bought it before i put all that stuff on it because if i'd put that stuff on it i wouldn't have sold it yeah because it's it's a great truck i would have it's a i think it turned out really well and i i, I probably would have kept it if i'd put that stuff on myself and not and and then i would have backed out of the deal and just yeah <laughs> like but like i need another car i'm at like 20 <laughs> two cars at this Jeez. point. I, I like the car collection out front. But the, <laughs> the thing that's on the hill that's most noticeable is a smart the smart car. car. Smart car on 31s. Everyone <laughs> needs a smart car on 31s. Though, right? <laughs> it's an off-road smart car. It's mm-hmm. the coolest thing. And then there's, uh, what else is out there? Well, we saw Smart the- car 31s out there is the shop truck. So it's the YJ pickup truck. I've had that forever. Uh, my Ultimate Adventure Colorado from last year is parked out front. Uh, there's a truck out there that's actually owned by Cummins. That's D006. It's the sixth truck to ever have a Cummins engine in it. So we're doing some work on it for them. And then I've got, uh, my V8 swapped Tacomas out there cause it's all done now. So I've been driving, putting miles on it. And then I've got my daily driver, which is my Titan. And then I just picked up my Defender from the interior shop, and they just got done putting the top on it. That and that's out front. And then out back is all the stuff that doesn't <laughs> run. Yeah, but that's not just a Defender. No, it's, well, it's a Defender ask. It looks like a Defender, but it's a Jeep JK chassis with an R2.8, Tremec 5 speed, uh, 
Rubicon axles, 35s. We went down to 35s on it. Uh, it's all aluminum body. It's a full custom Defender. How so thick is that aluminum three on that body? Three sixteenths of an inch everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy. It's super rigid. Yeah, it, it's a cool truck. I mean, that, so that's uh, Aqualoo Industries does those tubs. The cool thing, the funny about Aqualoo is they were going to do a Bronco body. So, because I'd known Todd from, from Aqualoo. Todd's, Aqualoo is up in Canada. They're up in like uh, uh, the West Coast, Canada, up in British Columbia. And Todd owns Aqualoo, which is actually an offshore barge company. That's what their main business is. And, but he just liked Jeeps. So he actually liked uh, FJ40s first. And he had all these all this aluminum laying around. He figured, I'm going to make an FJ40 body. So he did. And then he made a Jeep body. And then he made a Suzuki Samurai body. And then he just made a whole bunch of different versions of them out of this aluminum because he had so much aluminum building these offshore barges and the guys to weld it together. And so he formed a company that made bodies. And he's done so many custom bodies. And then him and I were talking to Easter Jeep, gosh, it would be five years ago. And he said, we're going to come out with a new body in a couple of years. we got some new machines that can actually do rolled corners and stuff. And he was going to do a Bronco body. He said the only reason he did it was there's so many people already doing Bronco bodies. He said there's, the market's saturated. So he did that body, which looks like a Defender, but it's, there's no, it's not a factory Defender. Like a F- Defender hardtop won't fit. A bunch of Defender parts will not fit on it. But it has that style of a of a classic Defender. Yeah. yeah, but it looks like a serious truck. I really like the color for Bronco people. It's like boxwood it's green. It's like a boxwood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's two. It's two Land Rover greens mixed together to make one green. Because it was uh, when the, when they were doing spray outs. Jeremy Winters, who painted it, who painted my Willie's wagon, he um, he didn't like the dark green. The light green was too light, so he mixed the two of them together to make a custom green for it. So it's there's only two trucks, two or three trucks that we know of that's got that. But they're all Land Rover colors. It's just mixed together to make our, his own Land Rover so color, cool. which is kind of cool. Looks like the brand new Land Rover, they mm-hmm. have a shade of that. It yeah, it's similar. Almost just like it. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I I think, yeah, you were talking about you have even more vehicles. I think my favorite was the uh race race lj is that mm-hmm. what it, yeah that's yeah. at the house yeah so the race lj and the 715 and the ls swap bmw and the willie's wagon are at the house yeah. so they're at the garage in the house so the lj that's all tube chassis ultra four pre-runner car type of thing so that's a that's a ton <laughs> tons of fun john came with me on a trip called trail to SEMA <laughs> on that one where we just went and had tons of fun in that truck and hit huge trails and had went really really fast yeah almost didn't Almost. come back from that trip yeah. one time. It was we got a couple of scary situations, <laughs> but it was all good. It was all good. And that was like that was a pretty pretty epic trip because it was one of my first like hanging out. Like I've gone and filmed off roading trips, but this was like I just got to kind of hang out with Ian and mm-hmm. and be in the passenger seat and take a nap when I wanted to, and I didn't yep. have to just run around and film the whole day. Yeah, it was a good trip. It was a good and, trip. We're bringing that back next year. We're bringing it with Onyx Off Road, the off road app company. We're bringing back. We're calling it Route to SEMA now. So yeah. next year we'll be doing another another route to SEMA with them, which will be good. Yeah. And John will be on that one, but you'll have to work on that. I'll have one, to work. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it'll be all right. But it'll still be fun. What was the all tubular car you built that kind of looked like a, a Lamborghini? In, uh... That was my old rock bouncer. Yeah, so that was the Raging Bull rock bouncer. So that was a 1,000 <laughs> horsepower all tube Jeez. rock bouncer type shenanigans. You got pretty crazy in that, didn't you? Yeah, we took it to a race, and we, we rolled it and finished the race in that one. So we did a jump, landed sideways, rolled it, it landed back on its wheels, and we took off and finished the race. But it was fun. That was It was a 1,000 horsepower big block Chevy that we detuned to like 800 horsepower, but it was a good time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So it was a good one. Yeah. I've, I've, we did the math once and it's a lot. Like I think at this point we're, I'm almost at like 100 different vehicles I've built over the past 20 years. So Jeez. it's a lot. That was one of the questions I want to ask you is how many <laughs> have you actually built? Yeah. That's probably just for television. Yeah. Right? It's a hundred. I know that's everything. It's about a hundred, a hundred different vehicles. And the, the, what I really like about it is it's a hundred and they're all different. Yeah. Like I've, I've, the one thing that I always try to do when I do TV stuff is like, it would be real easy just to bring a G, another Jeep, like bring in a JL, put a lift kit, wheels and tires and bumpers on it and call it a truck. Like I could, I could turn your Bron, like that Bronco, your Bronco, Donnie, I could build that in a weekend over and over and over and over again. But I don't want to do that. I, I've built one of those now and now it's done. I don't want to ever touch one of those again, unless Ford gives me one to cut in half. That'd be the only way I <laughs> touch one of those trucks again. But um, yeah, I, once I built something, I was like, the next one's got to be like very, very different. That's just how I like to roll. Now you're on your show. What you just shot this week, you are building a Bronco. Yeah, I have an OJ Bronco. <laughs> I tried to get you to buy that one too, I John. Know, I, I don't know. want a Bronco. I've got too many. <laughs> so yeah, so I had this crazy idea 
So everyone's buying these Bronco Raptors, right? And I don't understand it because I talked to two people who bought one. They paid $145,000 for a Bronco Raptor. First of all, I think they're ugly. The fender flares <laughs> look like are terrible. T- they look they literally look like a kiddie pool screwed onto the side of yes. the truck. They're a terrible design. <laughs> I will give so the the fiberglass guys, I think it's advanced design. Advanced design concept. Advanced something anyway. something concept. Yeah, yeah, ADC or anyway. Um they do the wide body Bronco kit. They I did see they just released the Bronco Raptor quarter panels and stuff. Uh, okay. They look a lot better. So they they're the aftermarket's fixing the problem. But I also say at one hundred and forty thousand dollars, which is what these people are paying, between one hundred and one hundred forty, you can build a really nice truck for one hundred forty thousand dollars. So I went out and I bought an OJ. What generation did I buy? I don't fifth even know. Gen. I bought a fifth gen. See, yeah. I don't even know what I bought. I just, I just <laughs> sent a picture to John. I'm like I found this. It's a thousand bucks on Facebook Marketplace. White, white. Yeah, it's white. <laughs> I, I messaged the guy and I said, "Is this thing still for sale?" And he's like, "Yeah." He goes, "But the transmission is in the passengers. No, transmission's in the back, and the transfer case is in the passenger seat." It does run if you put all that stuff back together. And I'm like, it doesn't matter, dude. I just need it for a thousand bucks. I'll come get it. So I went and got it for a thousand dollars. And then I ordered from Fiberworks. They have a, that, that, um, 86 to 95 Bronco Raptor conversion. So it's all new fiberglass. It's new bed sides. It's everything. And so we just finished the episode where we gutted the front end, put the front end on, cut the quarter panels off, put the quarter panel on, mocked up some bumpers on it and all that kind of jazz. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll bring it back next time we shoot where we'll sling a chassis underneath it and have some fun with it. So, And it's getting an all custom plate chassis. It's going to basically be trophy truck chassis, chassis kind of stuff. And can you talk about what you're going to do? Or- yeah, yeah. So there'll be – I got – I was going to do like a kit for it, like a suspension kit. But then I decided not to because it'd just be more fun. And I was going to yeah. put an LS in it just to make the internet mad. But um, then <laughs> that, I, I found you can buy those Godzilla motors for like five grand. So yeah. I'm going to get Godzilla six speed. It's going to be two wheel drive because the reality is you wouldn't take this thing off road in four wheel drive. It's going right. to be stupid. But it's uh, TTB front, uh, trailing arm rear. I'll probably build it with just probably coilovers at first, but it'll be set up to do like. 14 inch, two and a half inch coilover, and with a four inch bypass if you wanted to do it. So wow. it, it'll, it's legit trophy truck junk underneath this Bronco. So it'll be fun. There'll be a fun Bronco. And in, in, in true Baja trophy style, you're going to leave the cap off? I think I'm going to, yeah, I took the <laughs> roof off and I kind of dug how it looked, but then I, I saw you can get a soft top for it. So I think I'm going to do like a soft top in the back. It's going to have three seats in it. It's going to have two suspension seats in the front, one suspension seat in the back. The spare is in the back. Uh, it's already, we already have a mount for it. Um, and then, but yeah, it's running, it's doing 37s, 37s on six lug Chevy, uh, drivetrain underneath it. So it'll wow. be, it'll be fun. It'll be a cool truck. That's crazy. Well, it's so Ian does a lot of stuff. Yeah. He, he was over <laughs> he at the shop one day do, and yeah. I said something about, uh, electric car drivetrain and I got like an hour education <laughs> on electricity. What, what are you doing with that? There's a Tesla LDU back there. We also have a uh, a VW thing in the back that I've had forever because I bought it when I found it. I've been looking for a thing for a long time, and I finally found one for sale on Facebook one night, and so I bought it that night, went and picked up the next day, and it's getting a long travel sand car kit. So the same guy that designed my Bronco chassis, I use a guy out of, out of California called Jason Hurd. He does, he's like, he designs a lot of really, really high end trophy truck stuff, but he designs for cash. He also has a website called DIY, DIY off road, where you can just download. If you have a plasma table like me and you want to cut something, you go on his website, you download it and you can cut it. So you can download full IFS bulkheads, or you can download like a tabbed amount of shock. And then I don't have to draw and he's, and you pay for it. So it's like, like when I buy like a link tab kit, it's like 18 bucks, but then I have that file forever. I can just printing it out on like cutting it out on the magic the the what are they, the the fire scissors as some people call it <laughs> so anyway i called him up and i said i could bought this thing i'm gonna do a long travel kit with the tesla drive unit and then hypercraft batteries so i've got uh, the plan is a tesla ldu in the back long travel trailing arm like a six over six in the rear for guys who know what vw stuff is that means it's six inches wider six inches longer uh so it'll have like same thing like 16 inch travel so it'll probably end up with like about 22 inches of travel in the back about 20 inches of travel in the front so it'll be a fun little sand car, but it's going to be all Tesla powered just for fun, just to wow. be different. 
So, um, so one of the things that I've been thinking about and wondering, and, uh, I know a lot of people out there, you know, Ian's built so many amazing off-road vehicles. I, I wanted to get your insight on how, how to turn a, you know, a, an early Bronco into a really nice rock crawler that, you know, obviously that not to so the, you don't want, you don't race want to, LJ. You level. don't want to spend two hundred thousand yeah, dollars, right? So and, yeah, I mean the, the 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 well, the first decision you have to make is: it, it, do you want an actual rock crawler, or do you want like something that you can drive on the road and then take and do light off roading? So there's two different things. Yeah, rock crawler is easy. You just throw everything away and replace it. <laughs> um, Buy all new stuff. Yeah. Well, or you're just like you're gonna you're gonna put one tons underneath it. You're gonna put coilovers underneath. That's just what you're gonna do. Yeah. So, but and then you're gonna have to cut it and stretch it, and then you're gonna mangle up the body, and you're not gonna be happy because you're gonna wreck your Bronco body, all that kind of stuff. So I think so. There, there's always two different ways to look at it. If you want to take an early Bronco and make it into something that's like just a good off road rig, it's got good bones. I mean, the Ford nine inch in the back is good axle. Uh, the 44 up front is good. It's not great, but it's good. Um, even though it's a 44, it's still not as good as a modern 44. So like uh, okay. the modern 44 underneath a Jeep JK or a Jeep JL is way better than the 44 underneath the Bronco. Interesting. The axles are better. The metallurgy was way better. The spline counts are all different. So, but if you're, you can leave that axle in there, just, you just got to be smart. So in an ideal world, if you're building it into a quote rock crawler, you do one ton swaps, probably a new transfer case, and then you'd be done. Yeah. Because it's got a V8, which is great. You could live with the three speed auto. Um, and then, you know, if you put an Atlas in it or something like that and then did one tons, you'd probably be happy. And then you could leave it coils and leaves for now and then eventually upgrade it to coilovers all the way around if you wanted to. If you have all the money in the world, you would. there's so much aftermarket support for that truck. You could do like that Roadster Shop chassis if you've got 100 grand, you know, but right. that's a lot of. And I mean, I like the chassis. I think it's cool, but that's a lot of money for something that you could have. You could build one heck of a truck for that kind of money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for so. Sure. And then you're not going to take it off road no, if you, you put a road no, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then, and so that would be a, the classic Bronco. Yeah. Now, new Broncos, if I was building Donnie's Bronco again, I wouldn't even put a lift kit on it. I'd put 74 weld portals on it and call it a day. Really? Yeah. They just launched their portal boxes for the Broncos now, and that's a complete game changer. Wow. Because they've got portals for the Tacomas, portals for the Jeep, and portals for the 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 truck, the Broncos. And so the beauty of the portal is you get the lift, you get the gear reduction and it removes the load on the drivetrain. So you're done. Yeah. The only failure point in the Bronco that or the new Bronco at that point is going to be a steering rack. Wow. And there's no fix for that yet. Even the Bronco, even the Raptors are eating up steering yep. racks. Yep. And the problem with that is it's a EPS rack. So electric power steering. And unlike a hydraulic rack, in a hydraulic rack, the hydraulic oil acts like a shock. So the failure point in the Bronco steering rack is not the parts. It's the design of the system. So when you hit, like when you're driving off-road and, and you drop that tire into a big rut at speed and it hits the tire and tries to turn it, what happens with the tie rod end is the reason the tie rod ends break or the rack breaks is because there's no shock in there. So like in a hydraulic rack in a, in a Tacoma or anything else, when the tire hits... There's fluid in there that absorbs some of the shock load, whereas with the EPS racks, there's not. Wow. Um, there's fixes out there. There's companies out there who have designed hydraulic racks for the Bronco, but they can't put them in the trucks because at the technology level that the new Bronco is at right now, removing the electronic power steering rack and replacing it with a traditional hydraulic rack is probably against the law. Because there's so much technology that's tied into that steering system that the the government would view that as the same as removing a catalytic converter on a vehicle. Wow. So that's the issue with the new Bronco. And, and that's the, it's not the new Bronco. It's the issue with everything. Yeah. Is yeah. that there's so much technology in the vehicles that if the way to fix that technology is to go back in technology, but they don't want you to go back in technology because it's all at this point it's all safety related, yeah. and they're also arguing that it's also emissions. So it could be so it could be an emissions problem. So the fix for the Bronco steering rack isn't here yet. And I don't know when we're going to find it. Yeah, and I don't know if Ford is even going to be able to find it. Right. That's the problem. All right, enough about the new Bronco. 
I like. I want to go back. <laughs> I want to go back and talk, <laughs> about, talk about old Broncos. Old Broncos. John, yeah. let's talk about his Broncos. Yeah, well, let's we'll talk like about my Broncos. Okay. Better, better. So yeah. if I don't want to do one tons, so I'm yep. going back. Okay. So yep. I don't want to do one tons. Uh, I want to keep the Ford nine inch and do, do a Dana, Dana 44. Yep. Keep the Dana 44. Um, do I put lockers front and rear and what kind would you yeah wheelbase that short you have to do a selectable locker three right, lockers so there's three different types of lockers you can put in an axle you have a selectable locker or a mechanical locker or a spool yep uh so your selectable locker or sorry mechanical locker that's going to be like one that senses wheel speed automatically locks up and uh, there's a bunch of different kinds that limited slip is sort of one of those but it's not really okay uh, a mechanical locker works on the same theory but it's a much more aggressive hit when it locks the tires together and then you have your selectable lockers, which is electric, air, or there's some cable ones out there. Okay. And then you've got a spool, which is basically just two axles glued together inside the diff. <laughs> On a short wheelbase vehicle like a Bronco, if you don't use a selectable locker, especially in the back, if you're in the rain or any type of slippery surface or on dirt... What happens is when you make those corners, because the wheelbase is so short, the tires, when you just turn a corner, it thinks it's slipping. So it locks the tires together, and that is what is going to throw the back end of the truck out from underneath you. Wow. So in the snow, it'll be like, it's like driving a drift car. It's like all over the map. <laughs> so, yeah, so anything that's shorter, anything that's, short, anything that's under like 116 inches, so that's TJ's, CJ's, Broncos, It's you want a selectable locker. In the gotcha. Back. So you want either um, some type of air-operated locker or an electric locker or something that's basically going to lock up that you can turn it on and off. Yeah. Same with the front? Would you do that Oh, in the yeah. Front you want to have a selectable in the front yeah. all day long. Yeah. yeah. Even if you did a mechanical in the back, a selectable in the front just makes it easier to turn when you're off-road. And then then if, you, if, you, if you're if you out driving and you transition to edit some dirt roads onto some asphalt for a short period of time, if you had a selectable locker in the front and your hub's locked, you wouldn't even be able to steer the, steer the car. Gotcha. So you'd want to be able to turn that thing on and yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then the only other issue with the Bronco, in my opinion, the early Broncos, is they're narrow. Yes. So if you did want to do a Dana 44 and a Ford 9 inch, it would probably be better to get either get some wider axles, like either build a set that are wider, mm. or basically find something that's wider. Yeah. That that would be the biggest thing. The Off pro- like a full size. Yeah. The only problem is because the Broncos use that that basically that you know that that goofy trailing arm type shenanigans. It, you, it's not easy swap. It's, you, right. You're into coilovers. And then some type of link suspension at that point. That's you just kind of have to at that point. Yeah. Because you're not going to find an, another axle that you can use that that type of that type of trailing arm does because it doesn't have the wedges and everything built right. into the axle unless you transferred all that over and welded it up, which is a lot of work. Lot and of work. at that point, it would be better just to get something totally different. Yeah. At that yeah. point, you might as well just build axles and go from there. Like get yeah. some, and in all honesty, at that point, you might just want to go one tons and just call it a day. Yeah. 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 Well, that helps. That that was uh, that was my question. That, uh, you know, because that's my next uh, next thing to get John's Bronco off road ready is getting some getting some lockers and that kind of thing put in put in place. Getting the you know I would and a roll cage. I, I would probably say lockers. I'd say for your Bronco, it'd be lockers, um, and then maybe a transfer case upgrade because the Dana Twenty is not a great transfer case. Yeah, uh, those would be your two the two next big steps. Nice for your Bronco. Good to know. I I have something I remember when I was dropping the red Bronco off, it had like, I don't know, 60 miles on it. And you roll the door up and you're in here with your welding mask on and a settling torch going. And I'm like going, Oh shit, was this a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> Never be afraid to cut a car in half, Donnie. That's my rule. <laughs> well, that's Never what I was afraid. worried about. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been known to cut a few cars, but that's why I don't buy brand new stuff. That's just the reality. I, I just don't, I don't get that. I know there's lots of people out there that do it, but I mean, that's why I don't I don't buy new cars because I can't justify spending like forty thousand dollars on a vehicle that I'm going to replace like eighty percent of it. Yeah. So that's why I don't get that's why I don't understand the side by side craze. I mean, I get it, I do because it's not a sixty thousand dollars side by side. It's a two hundred dollars side by side because you just pay the monthly and start going riding. But yeah. I don't understand that. That to me, I can't justify going and buying a brand new Jeep Gladiator or a Jeep JL and and picking up like sixty thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars worth of debt. And then putting one tons underneath it and putting suspension underneath it. I just don't get it. Because I just think, man, you can buy like something cool and old and be way cool. Because the other problem is if I go and buy a brand new Gladiator that's like 70 grand, put one tons and 40s and all the suspension and all the good bolt-on parts that I know that it would work really well. 
man, if I pull up to a stoplight or someone's going to have the exact same Jeep Gladiator yeah. as me, <laughs> just in brown instead of green. Whereas <laughs> if I buy a Jeep JK for five grand, cut it in half, build a two-door Gladiator, there's only three of those in the country right now, and I own one of them. And Jeep has one, I have one, and there's one other guy that has it. Yeah. So we have one of three of the same vehicle that I built for half the price. A lot more labor, but it's, it's the only one around. That's why I, I, that's why I like that better. That's yeah. just, I think it's more fun that way. Yeah. Well, Ian, we so appreciate this. Appreciate you having us in your shop and letting us uh, just talk to you a little bit about Broncos and cars and trucks and everything in between. And this place is awesome. Where can people find you uh, on YouTube, Instagram? Uh, Everything's Big Tire Garage. So Big Tire Garage or Four Wheeler on Motor Trend. But yeah, if you're on any social media, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Threads. Oh, that's the new yes, one. The new you know one. On threads, yet, yeah, man. Come I know. On. You got to get, get with the time, John. I know. You got to be on Threads. Everything's always Ian from Big Tire Garage or just Big Tire Garage. That's what it's always the same. Nice, nice. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, check Ian out if you have the Motor Trend app. Watch Four Wheeler uh, or check out his YouTube page, Instagram, all that good stuff. But before we go, uh, I got to remind everyone, we are still doing the $500 Tom's gift certificate giveaway. If you want a $500 Tom's gift certificate, Ian, uh, it's on the table. So uh, go to the link in the description below and you can check out how to uh, get into that giveaway next episode when we do our live episode in Medford, Oregon at Tom's Off-Road. We're going to be announcing the winner of the giveaway live, kind of live. You don't have to be there to win. But uh, 500 bucks and uh, some sweet swag from Tom's Off-Road. Uh, so check that link in the description below. And that's it. We'll see you guys in the next one.